What's up everybody? I am new to Tops. On this channel I do a lot of videos about photography, tech, cameras, and I even do some comedy skits sometimes. So if that sounds good to you, make sure you subscribe and stick around for the rest of the video. Today we are going to learn about the best portrait lens that I've ever experienced. The 85mm 1.4. Stay tuned. <laughs> These transition lenses have to be the best thing I've ever purchased when it comes to glasses because these things look cool as hell. They almost look like Ray-Bans, right? So anyways, what's up two timers? Back again for another video. I know you recognize this spot because this is my favorite spot to film that's by my job. And I always come here at lunch to film and here we are. So I've been recording videos for a solid two weeks straight ever since my last photo shoot. But every time I go to edit them, they're just not turning out how I want to, you know, how I want them to be. So I told myself with this video, no matter how the recording turns out, which I know is not going to be that good because it's windy, I'm just going to do it because if you, if you watch any other YouTubers, there's kind of a thing they say. They say if you focus on perfection too much, you'll never get anything done because nothing is going to be perfect every time that you do it. And that, my friends, is why I haven't been posting videos because I'm so focused on having a great video that I'm just not putting the stuff out. And that's a terrible way to do things. So, no matter how this video turns out, I'm posting it. But anyways, the point of this video today, make sure you remember that perfection thing. Don't worry about perfection. Just put it out there and move on to the next thing because, well, I can't say that applies to everything because it just doesn't. But when it comes to this YouTube game and these videos and stuff, don't be perfect because you never know which video is going to be the one that is your banger. And this, I'm positive, isn't going to be my banger, but it's one of the videos that I'm putting out today. So, I'm going to record this real quick, get back to the job, edit the video, post it today, and yeah. So today's video. I know you guys have noticed I've been into photography lately, but today's video is about what I think and what I've grown to learn is probably the best lens you can use to take portrait photography. And this is the 85mm Sigma. Now I'm not saying you have to get this lens as an 85 mil, but you need a 85 mil lens. I did a photo shoot at Starbucks recently. Those have turned out to probably be the best pictures I've ever taken of somebody, and they were mostly all done with this lens. I'm gonna put a couple of them on the screen so you can see them while I'm talking, but they are just crisp and amazing looking. If you do not have an 85 mil lens in your bag and you think you're taking great portrait pictures, trust me, it gets better. It gets better and you gotta stop playing yourself and get one because this thing is a damn beast. And I suggest anybody who does pictures, even if you don't do just portraits, get one and just try it out, please, for the love of God, try it out. This is the actual Sigma brand of it. And I kind of wanted to do a little review and a couple, you know, kind of a review and some of my thoughts on this lens. This lens, I have nothing but good things to say about it. it um, the focus was great. I had no problems trying to focus. I think out of 150 pictures I've taken, it only lost focus and gave me an issue one time. And that's saying a lot. And that one time it lost focus, it was just a lighting issue. And to top it off, we were at Starbucks at like 11 o'clock at night. So the lighting wasn't optimal, but 
a 1.4 f-stop made it perfect so as i went to edit some of the pictures i was thinking i was going to find a lot of the pictures that have like soft edges and stuff and this is the most crisp lens that i have i'm talking about the sharpest pictures i've ever taken and they were at 1.4 so with that being said do yourself a favor invest in the 85 because if you're not taking pictures at 85 you're missing out filming videos with dark glasses on this is kind of nice i like the i like the whole way it looks <laughs> so you guys tell me how you've been how is life now that game of thrones is over have you been watching handmaiden's tale which came back because i have and one thing that's pissing me off is that they didn't post the whole show at once so I could binge it. They only post, they're posting one episode at a time as if we're watching something on TV. And uh, I just want to know what happens at the end of the story. I, I'm ready, I'm ready for it to end. But yeah, update on my life. I've been doing a lot of photography, a lot. I'm talking about photo shoots every week which is rare for me because when I first started trying to do this, I couldn't find one person to let me take pictures of them. Now I'm getting them constantly and I am actually loving it. Like I said, follow me on Instagram. Definitely give a few comments on my pictures because I love to see, I love for you guys to see some of my work. And if you have any questions about any camera related stuff, I now consider myself to not be an amateur anymore. I, could, I can't say I'm a professional because I don't have a job in photography, but amateur, eh, it's a stretch now. My pictures are coming out really good. And someone just hired me for a wedding. Can you believe that? A wedding. So I guess after I do the wedding, I can actually say I'm a professional photographer at that point, right? right I think so if I do like the wedding stuff I will be doing a lot more weddings and I'll probably quit my day job because uh, who the hell doesn't want to do something that they love doing and make a lot of money off of it I would be a fool to stay at my nine to five if this photography stuff pans out for me and I can make a career out of it if any of you guys are professionals hit me up give me some tips because this is my first wedding and I definitely would like to know some of the, you know, some of the stuff that professionals actually do at weddings. I would love some tips, uh, some do's and don'ts, you know, all that good stuff. Um, if you are a photographer, follow me on IG and I will follow you back because I do need more photographers down my timeline, you know. Live and learn, you know, might pick up some cool ideas from you guys you might pick up some cool ideas from me you just never know what might happen not much to say get you an 85 mil lens and for the real diehard fans who watch me on youtube but don't even know anything about what the hell i'm talking about this 85 mil lens as i promised i'm going to dumb it down and not use super technical terms for you guys so here's what i'm saying this lens is an 85 mil lens that is the distance and how far it's zoomed in when you're looking through the camera this this lens i'm using right now is at 24 mil and i'm standing this close to it if this lens was on this camera i would have to stand back by these boats here because it would be so zoomed in that you would be looking at the pores on my nose. You might be able to see my brain through my skin because that's how much zoomed in it is. Now I also mentioned that this is an f-stop 1.4. f-stop is basically how much light gets let into your lens. If you have a lens that is you know 5.6 like my old camera a 5.6 lens is good for daytime but at nighttime it's going to struggle because not a lot of light comes into that lens 
f-stop 1.4 is a lot lower which means a lot more light comes into the lens so when you shoot with an f-stop 1.4 at nighttime you have a, a way easier time taking pictures because you can actually see what you're shooting and to make it even better the lower your f-stop is aka the more light that comes into your lens the more blurry your background gets and that is absolutely necessary if you think you're going to be out here taking creative portrait pictures of anybody because the blurry background also called bokeh just makes the subject pop away from the background a lot more and the pictures just look better so we just learned two things Lower f-stop on a lens means you get more bokeh, aka blurry background, and you can see better in low light situations. You also learn that focal length, 85 mil, 24 mil, 70 mil, means the distance from your lens to what it's seeing, how far it zooms in. And that's pretty much all there is to lenses. If you're gonna get into photography, you need to know that a lens that has a low f-stop, 1.8, 1.4, usually costs more than a lens that doesn't have an f-stop that goes that low. So, with 85 mil lenses, you can get an f-stop for a lens, which doesn't do too well in low light. And it'll be a lot cheaper than getting the 1.4 version, which does phenomenal in low light. So it's just something you gotta think of when you're out here purchasing lenses and getting into photography. Oh, I forgot to mention one other thing about the lens situation. There are two types of lenses. There's lenses made for crop sensors and there's lenses made for full frame cameras. This was probably the most important thing that I didn't know when I first got into YouTube and purchased the Canon 80D, which is a crop sensor camera that uses crop sensor lenses. When you have a crop sensor camera, like my old camera, the Canon 80D, the camera crops in by 1.6 of whatever lens you use. So if you use a 50 mil lens, you're cropped in by 1.6. So that means your 50 mil lens is actually around an 80, 85 mil lens. And if you're doing YouTube, especially if you're uh, vlogging and you're holding the camera like this, that means the only lens that you can use is like a 10 mil lens, which turns out to be like an 18 mil lens or something around there. So getting a crop sensor camera kind of limits your ability with lenses when it comes to vlogging. Because I now have a full frame camera with no crop, which means whatever lens I use is the actual focal length of the lens. So now on my camera, I have a 24 mil lens and I can stand this close and I can still be seen without, you know, zooming into my brain. So <laughs> if you're gonna get into YouTube, if you have the money, I would suggest you definitely go full frame, especially if you're vlogging because you're kind of future proofing yourself for if you ever get into photography and if you want to purchase you know a way better lens than the cheap 10 mil lenses that are like 350 on crop sensors food for thought that was just a little something about photography for people who aren't really into it let me know what you think about my pictures i'll be looking for you guys on twitter i'll be looking for you guys on instagram and I'll be looking for you guys in the comments of this video. Thank you for watching everybody. I hope you learned something. I hope I was able to teach you in a way that you can understand, even if you're not a camera person. It is a beautiful day out here. I, I gotta say it's, I love this place. Except right now because the floor is kind of flooded because it rained today. But any day where it, the sun is out, this place is amazing. I say that a lot, but this place is literally amazing. But it's so amazing. That some ducks decided to join me for a video. The ducks decided to join me 
our video and keep me company. <laughs> Anyways, thank you for watching everybody. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I will catch you on the next video. I'm new two times if you haven't noticed. I do a lot of photography stuff now, a lot. But I also do tech still. And if you would like me to talk about some of the upcoming phones in tech, which I normally do, and I'll give you some suggestions on what to buy for your next phone, just let me know. Because even though I do this photography stuff now, I'm still a tech nerd. I still work in IT. So hit me up. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I will catch you on the next one. Peace.